This video is divided into two parts. The first part is going to be the assembly of the G-scale controller and block signal. Here's the block signal, three light block signal. Uh, and then here is the uh, electrical box. It's got a, an LED on it. Um, that's ready to go. And uh, this, this is the uh, mounting bracket for the controller, which goes in here with the battery. So we're going to put all of these pieces together. Uh, the first thing to do really is to, uh, most of our customers have purchased uh, these rubber blocks and it's either the 4x4 or the 4x6 version. Um, it's about an even split about which one people are buying. Um, we do drill the foot holes. And so let me just pull two of these out. These are the feet that come with your kit. Uh, there's a little stub in the bottom of it. Uh, this is a 3 16th inch hole. Uh, this happens to be a half inch hole here uh, that we drilled right in the center, almost in the center. Uh, we have two different systems. We have one which is with the battery and one without the battery. This is the one without the battery. Uh, it's 12 runs on a 12 volt DC supply. And the way you put these pins in is you just push them down and twist them a little bit. It's a little bit tight, uh, which is good, and uh, that's what we want. So these will just fit in here. If you want to make them more permanent, uh, you can try super glue. Although what I found is that over time, the rubber, uh, particularly outside, expands and contracts. Uh, it's flexible. And so we're using uh, E6000 for a lot of the assembly. Uh, it's clear, it's transparent, and it's flexible, and it sticks. So it's got all the right qualities we'll need, and we'll be using this um, for the magnets in particular. Um, I use a Fortzner bit. Um, in this case, I recessed a couple of holes, and uh, we have a template uh, that, that you can use for this. So if you buy the 12-volt version, it comes with a template that tells you where to drill the hole. So uh, there's where the, the magnets should go, and just anywhere in, that, in this space for the through hole and then it will just sit on, sit on the f ground or on your, your layout. All right, so for the 4x6, same principle. Um, we have a different kind of template. Notice that it's a little bit recessed uh, on this side and flush on this side. And what I found from experimentation, so this is, these are the two magnets for the block signal. This will sit right on there, okay, um, is that if when we made it flush, the glue attached to the template. So put the recessed side down and glue one of the magnets first. Now these magnets are pretty strong. So if you try to put one down and then the other one, what you will find is the other magnet will want to flip over and join <laughs> the other magnet. And so uh, the template helps with that. And then uh, do one uh, and, and push it in there. Uh, with the uh, E6000 and then take some blue tape and tape it down. All right. And once it's dry, you know, three or four hours, keep the tape there and put the second magnet and wrap it around. Now the magnets that go on the block will have a colored dot. Uh, it could probably, most of the time it's yellow, but any kind of colored dot, you want the yellow dot facing up so that it mates with the block signal. We've already decided which way is up, north and south, so for consistency, that's the, that's the way to do it. All right, so that's about the template for, the, uh, for this, which we have mounted also on the same block. Uh, we have a slightly different kind of uh, uh, footing, and this has room for a magnet inside uh, inside of the uh, the foot. So we've put those in in the correct orientation and what you do is you take the four magnets that are, are loose, just drop them into each one of these holes and then put the little dab of the glue onto that second magnet and uh, again I did this with super glue but I, like, the, like I said the E6 is better and what you do is just position this where you want it. Now there's a, there's a hole here and this hole has to come up through the front part right here of this setting. So drill the hole where approximately you were, where you want that um, and then position the bracket. And so with the bracket, let's put the uh, battery onto 
uh, the, the circuit board onto the battery. So here are the banana plugs and you just slide that in there. Okay. And this is going to sit this way. So this is the forward part. Here's the sense. Whoops. Let me get that back in the camera. Uh, here's the sensor. Uh, and so this sits in the, in the forward orientation like that. Okay. So that's, that's the way that goes. Uh, you will have a little bit of a connector here and two brass tabs. That's so that the light that's on the outside of this building, which is, uh, we have some copper strips here. Those will go in and connect with the copper strips and that will light this, this light right here. And you'll see that in just a second. All right. So there's the, there's the footing part, uh, and the magnet part and so forth. All right. So now what we're going to do is we have our block signal. Um, this is one of the early prototypes where all the wires were just uh, red and black. Uh, at the end, we connected up the colors. The version that you will have, the wire all the way from the LED will be colored. So there you go. There's a black common, red, green, and yellow. All right. And all you do is thread this through the hole. Get these straightened out a little bit. Get on camera. Okay. I just I, what I do is just give them a little turn, and they'll come up. Now, one of the other things I did uh, as I was toting this around is I decided to cut. Like or initially, the wires were just hanging underneath the feet. Uh, let's put the feet back on these. These were holding them off the in my case of the deck of my patio. Um, and so the, the wires are kind of hidden, but then I started carrying it around and decided what I would do is use a, a, also that a wider, uh, almost one inch Forstner bit. It's probably one and a quarter and just cut a series of uh, half inch deep holes. This is uh, one inch. So half inch deep holes across this so that I had a little place to hide the wires. And then again, I just used some blue tape over that. So anyway, so now once we have the, the wire through here, um, in this particular case, I have the signal pointing this way. Let me just get the wires down a little further. Okay, so I'm going to have the train coming by and the signal will be facing uh, the, the train. And, it could, and uh, when I did this originally, I realized that there's a direction if the train's going this way or going this way, you can decide whether to have the signal facing uh, east or west. Uh, that's your preference. Uh, so anyway, so to get this, the wires in, it makes it easier if we take that out and feed these wires back through the other hole, which is where the, uh, the signal controller is. Okay, so we've got that done. We're going to feed them through the front slot right here and then face and fasten that down just like that. So that's the, the setup. Okay. So the next step is I'm going to take this the controller off here and using the screwdriver that we provided, I loosened this very bottom one here. Uh, again, the power's off here. I'm trying to hold the, the circuit board, not, putting my fingers all over it, but, but holding it on the edge. Uh, there's no way to hide this. And, and there is a protective coating on this. It's called a, uh, it's a compliance coating and it helps protect and weatherize it. Uh, but there's still some circuit components that are exposed a little bit. So just be mindful of that. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to just insert the wires into the terminals. Nothing fancy about that. The bottom one is common positive. So this is a common cathode uh, setup. I know that the top one is red. So we'll put that one in. There we go. Next is yellow. And all of the signal controllers have four outputs. This is a three light signal. Uh, but if you recall from some of the other videos, the introductory video, we have a seven light 
uh, PRR or Long Island Railroad style signal and that's where you use the bottom or center connector. Whoops, I think that one is being a little difficult here. Can you see that on the camera? Just get that guy in the hole. There we go. Hold it in with my other finger. Okay, so before I put all of this back together, I'm just going to hook up the, plug it in, turn it on. I'm going to look for the blue light to blink four times here. So that tells me that the sensor is fired up and ready to go. The sensor is this little square thing right up here. And you'll notice if I put my finger in front of it, the blue light is going on. All right. So when that happens, we should get a red signal. And we do. Okay, so we know that's working. And I have this on a pretty quick timeout as far as moving through the aspects. So there's yellow and there's green. And if I trigger it again, it goes back to red. So I know I've got the connections working, everything set up, um, and I'm going to turn the power off. Now, the way, uh, so again, this is getting into some power management, just some experience with this. Uh, what I want to do is have all the wires go between the banana plugs in the back and then plug the, this uh, battery back in so that when I clean this up and pull all of these back through, the wires are in the right place, they're out of the way as far as the battery is concerned, and I can just slide it in like that. All right, so I've got some extra wire. You, you want to have a little bit of extra wire so you can pull this out to, to uh, remove the battery from time to time. And as you see, you know, it's pretty neat. It's not, not bad and the, the feet keep it above. Uh, this last connection here is just two pins and they just go into this little uh, socket right there. And so that's, that's the setup. And now if we, so the sensors on this side, the hole for the sensor is here. So I'm going to slide this in. Oh, let's turn the power on. There we go. And now the metal contacts uh, connected with the, the, the copper strips inside and the light is on. And if we signal it, turn it around this way, you can see, let's move these out of the way. And uh, so the signal is now working. Now I had set the brightness down quite a bit for, oops, let's get this into the camera a bit more here. So I'm gonna trigger it, there we go. Now you can see the whole thing. So it looks pretty sharp. That's the, that's, now I can just take this and just put this out on my layout and I have a, a signal uh, system. So that's the configuration. Um, again, just a little bit more on the version with 12 volts. Uh, same sort of approach. Here's the bracket for that. Okay. It has magnets on the bottom. I countersunk magnets here. There we go. Um, in this case, on this version of the signal controller, the sensor is on the back and uh, there's no connection for the battery and we have a screw terminal for the power side here. So we just slide that in with the sensor facing outward. There we go. That will just go in right like that. And the power wires and everything will go inside this hole and down underneath. And here's the case and that just fits perfectly. And uh, as we've talked about before with the magnets and so forth, if I had accidentally knock it down, the wires will hold it on the platform, but we're not going to break it. So that's really, uh, so that's the first part, just getting it set up, uh, the wires connected and the power set up, ready to go. So let's talk about configuring the controller. Okay, let's talk about configuring and setting up the G controller uh, for uh, G scale uh, signaling. And uh, let's take a little bit of a tour. I have this uh, wooden stick that we, uh, we provide for our sound module. So I don't want to be poking metal onto the board here. Uh, so here's the power switch. We use that already. There's a push button select button. That's we, we call it the select button. So we'll be using that. Uh, then there is what we call trim potentiometer. So we're going to use this screwdriver to adjust 
these potentiometers. This comes with it. So we have P1, P2, and P3. So what this can do, so the first thing, the first sensor that we have here is how long does the lights, the uh, sensor stay active after I leave uh, the detect area. The second uh, one over here determines how quickly it goes through each aspect from red to yellow to green or the other, you know, if there are more aspects that you're using after the, the block is cleared. So after the light goes out, how fast does it go through the, the uh, timing? Um, and the third trim potentiometer is for adjusting the range for the detection zone. And so we'll be working with all of those. Um, over here on the right hand side is the signal out connectors. So this is a precision detector. We call precision detector max because the sensor, uh, unlike the HO and N scale one, which has about a five and a half inch range, uh, this has a, a, a better than 20 inch range. And so we can use it to detect things. And there's a signal out, which you would use for latching. Uh, there's a video about latching that you can look. It's the same concept uh, there. Um, you can also use it to trigger sound. So this same signal controller, uh, G controller, would be used to trigger our crossing gate flashers. And this line here would be connected to the sound module. And uh, that would be the trigger for the sound. Going down the next here, we have a ground common wire, which we use from time to time if we're using multiple power supplies. Uh, the next one is the latch, and the next one is detect. So if you have one of our uh, signal controllers, you'll know on the left-hand side, these are the exact same setup, and they behave the same way. So let's talk about latching. Again, there's another story on that. We would have a signal from another controller connect to the latching on here. Um, we could use the detect signal from another blocks, uh, sorry, another precision max that we have out. So in the example I gave of the crossing flasher, uh, you would want to have east traffic and west traffic. So those two sensors would connect up to this detect and that would trigger the flashing lights and then also the output to the sound here. Okay. Uh, going down here, uh, this controller can handle either the three light uh, block signal or the seven light block signal. To do the seven light block signal, we need a center light. So we have red, yellow, green, and the center light, and then a common positive, uh, sorry, common ground. So this is a common cathode setup. So the ground common here. Now this is the battery version. Uh, there's a big difference in how this last JST connector is used, whether using battery or, or 12 volt supply. So the 12 volt supply, you wouldn't have the battery behind. In this case where we do have the battery, we can plug in a, a power connector with a JST plug, run it down and power another G controller off of the same battery. Uh, of course, it would deplete the battery faster, but that would still still work. And so you could have two of these connected up and just plug in the wire. In the case where you're, uh, you have the 12 volt version and you're, not, and you're not connected to a battery, this is the 12 volt input. Never connect a 12 volt line into here on the battery mode because you'll just short circuit the traces on here and destroy the board. But we do make it pretty flexible and uh, then the board designs the same board uh, so that saves us a little money and just makes it a more universal approach. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the timing one because the way it's set up here, uh, I can easily demonstrate it. So the timing for the, the detect, you can see it goes off almost immediately and I have to set all the way counterclockwise. What I'm going to do is insert the screwdriver into this hole and turn it clockwise so the, the signal there is almost uh, horizontal. Okay, and now when I trigger this and release, you'll notice that the light stays on. So the way you would use this is if the train is coming by and the caboose finally passes the sensor, you might not want the light sequence to start immediately to go from red to green. It's still red because the train is just barely past the sensor. 
So the way you simulate a more realistic approach is you slow down or add a timeout to the time that the, the sensor releases, okay? So that's one of the, the what was the initial reason. Um, then even in some of our HO implementations with the sensor, the sensor is so fast and so precise, particularly up close, that the sensor was shutting off when it saw the gap between the rail cars. So you have a bunch of box cars going by and the sensor was going on and off, on and off. So what you do is you slow down uh, probably to about one second or two seconds. And you can imagine in G-scale that gap is even bigger. So that when the train goes by, you'll have another train go by and it will stay uh, occupied while that's uh, going on. All right, so you can see I, didn't, I missed it the first couple of times there, but you can see I'm triggering it. And so that's that you can have the trains going by. All right, so that's the, that's the, uh, the use there. So now I'm gonna reposition things a little bit so that you can see the speed with which the aspects change. All right, I've just, I'm using the, uh, the electrical box case to hold this up and what I did is I set the timer uh, back to instant and I also set the speed of the aspects to its lowest setting as virtually instantaneous. So what you'll see is when I put my hand in front of the signal, as long as my hand's there, it stays red. When I release, it goes through the aspects very quickly. I'll do it one more time. So red and then back through. So that's the fastest. So what I'm gonna do is adjust this slightly and then trigger it and release. And you can see it slowed down a little bit. And then I'm gonna trigger it again. All right, so depending on how your layout is set up, how fast the trains are running, how much of a delay do you want between the cycles, you've got two levers, if you will. You've got, first of all, the, the speed of which the, the, the trip releases, so it's, it's gonna be immediate right now, okay? And that starts the clock, and that clock will go at a certain pace uh, to change the lights. Oops, I just triggered it again with my hand, so it's gonna start over. I'll stay away and you'll see it go from red to yellow and then back to green. Okay, so I'm going to speed it up a little bit because I want to show you how we can change the aspect behaviors. And that's really simple. So that we're going to use the push button now. So right now it's set to three. Three is three aspects, that's all we have. So I'm gonna just push this button, regardless of what state the controller's in, triggered or not, I'm just gonna push this four times. One, two, three, four. And you saw that it counted to four, it blinked four times. So now, when I trip this, it will go to red, yellow, and now flashing yellow. So the four, the setting of four for the aspect adds a flashing yellow before it turns green. All right, let's do five. One, two, three, four, five. It reconfirms that that's the right number. We'll trip it again. This time we have yellow and red at the same time and then yellow and green at the same time, and then the yellow will extinguish. All right, that was five. Let's do six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can see how easy it is to, to make these changes. All right. So we added a yellow flashing in between the, the solids. Okay, 
So the next one is 7. 7 is going to go back to a 3 aspect setup, but with fading between the, the different aspects, so the different stages. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, let's trip that now. And you can see that now it's fading from red from each between each color. And that will go faster or slower uh, the rate of fade based on how bright the light is. It's not that clever. Um, the brighter the light, the longer the, the range of, of settings that we'll have to go through for that fade. But it's a, it's a nice effect. So very easily you can add some nice uh, visual effects on your layout. You can set the timing of how sensitive the, the detector is. And you can also change the rate of speed between the different aspects. Okay, So that's all there is for the aspect and the trigger. And once it's triggered, uh, what we're going to do next, I'm going to position this around a little bit of a, a different angle, and we're going to work with the setting of the range, the detection range itself. All right, in this first setup, I have the signal controller set up here, and I uh, borrowed a piece of uh, mirrored uh, plastic I have. I didn't take the the peel off of it, otherwise it would be much shinier, but you can see the uh, light in the mirror. And on the right hand side here I have one of my uh, box cars from my, my layout, the G-Scale layout. And so uh, I've set this zone to just inside where this box car is. And so I'm going to just move this to the left and you can see that it didn't take a lot of movement for it to uh, pick it up. It's pretty precise. That, that's the whole point. All right, so we have this in standard mode now. So any place that I put my hand in between the sensor and the trigger zone will trip it off. Okay, so you see that it's changing back. I put the uh, speed of the aspect change on the shortest distance and the response time, no time out on the sensor so we could focus on um, the ranging and that's the way you want to do it. You don't want to be sitting around waiting for this thing to go through its cycles. Uh, you want to set, you turn them both to zero and uh, do the ranging. So that's, that's the way this works. Um, and so the first thing that we can do, I, I fiddled with this uh, little thing. Now, if you put your hand here, you might set off the light. Uh, what I did is I put the screwdriver in there and tilted back and so I could set it and I set it just inside where this car is. So let's move it again. And you can see it trips it. And we're going to move back out again. All right, so that's the basic function. All right, maybe you don't want to adjust the, the screwdriver that way. So the next thing you can do is I'm going to set this to zero. I'm going to put it all the way down to zero, OK? And so basically. Uh, it's, uh, it's auto, on auto range, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the car in here, and I want this to trip it here, but I don't want it to trip it here. So you can see in the mirror, it's still tripped. Here's where my rail is going to be. So the way we do it, I'm going to do it on auto range. I'm going to hold the button, the select button, and all the lights will go out, and I'm going to wait for the blue light to come back on, and then release my finger. Okay, so now it's in configuration mode, and you can do a bunch of things in configuration mode. The one we're going to work on right now is auto ranging. So to, tr to set that off, once it's blinking on and off like this, I'm going to press this button twice, once, twice, and that will put it into this auto ranging mode. And the button is, the light is blinking slower now, and so I, could, uh, I can move these things around. So, okay, this is, this is where the train's going to be. This is where my, my signal is going to be, and I'm going to just let it go. And you saw that it blinked very fast, and now it's come back on, and it's, trig it's, it's triggered because this is now the distance for the setup. What I'm going to do is move this away from the, the trigger a little bit, and now you can see that uh, I put my finger in there, but now you can see the range is different than what we had before. So we move it in. 
and we can move it, move it out. All right. So now the range is going to be inside right there. Okay. So that's auto ranging. Now the other thing that we can do is put this into a mode called. Uh, so it's right there is the range. I'm going to push it outside the range. There we go. Okay, so now this is standard mode. So anything in this range will trip it off. But let's say that my cat goes through here all the time, or we have other traffic, uh, train traffic, and or something on the other side going on. We don't want to. We want. We have a train here, and we have a train track here. We don't want the second train picked up. So we just want this train. Okay. So let's move this in. I'm going to adjust the sensor down so that it's just picking up this front surface. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is put it into uh, zone mode, all right? So that's 12 pushes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and it'll just flash, okay? So now it's only going to pick up the zone that I set. So I'm going to set the zone for this front surface. There it goes, okay? So I tripped it off, and now let's say the train goes by, train is out of the way, all right? Train comes back into play, right? But watch this. So let's get the train out of the way. Will it stay there? There we go. I'm going to put my hand in here. Nothing happens. Okay, I'm going to put my hand out here in the zone that we were picking up before, nothing happens. So this is called the zone mode. So only the zone where I set the trigger is going to go off. So that's, that's zone mode. And so you could have a couple of parallel tracks and just pick up the one that's closest to the, the, the signal and you'd, and you'd be uh, all set. So that works, uh, the sensor works inside and outside, directly into the sun at night. Uh, it's just fantastic. So that's the way the setup is. Um, just a little bit of work with that. Um, so we had a standard mode and zone mode and we were able to adjust it both manually with the screwdriver and with the range auto ranging setup.